Lord. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Right. We're just going to ask you some questions if you don't mind. Okay. It's a beautiful morning. <laughs> <laughs> Very lovely yeah. outside. Yeah. Okay. So how are you? How's your week been? So far so good. Yeah. I'm uh, doing well. So if you had another career, what would you think you'd be doing? Oh, that's a, t a little tough. Uh, if I wasn't teaching, I'd probably, I don't know, maybe I'd be a web developer because that's I, something I'm interested in. So I might be working on that or making apps. I was a computer science major for a while, so I might have done that. So when did you create your website for chemistry? When? I've been doing websites for my chemistry class ever since 1998. So basically when the web was invented. Oh, wow. Almost, almost. But um, yeah, I've been an early adopter of doing websites and I try to update them every year and make them a little new, fresh, and whatnot. But uh, I do like keeping, you know, my website for my class, not just use Canvas. Very interesting. Now, stereotypical question, do you have a favorite element, and if so, why? Oh, that's such a question to ask people who teach chemistry. I, I really don't have a favorite element, but if I had to pick one, oh, how would you pick? I like zinc, but it's a bit of a cop-out because it has the letter Z in it, and Z is my favorite letter of the alphabet, so zinc, zirconium, anything that kind of looks cool. So I'm more of graphics-oriented when I prefer elements. I'm not thinking... I asked a friend once, and he goes, well, why don't you pick oxygen, because you need it to breathe. And I'm like, yeah, nah, zinc's probably it. Plus, it's really good for electrochemistry as well, and I'm an electrochemist, so zinc's pretty cool. Now, tying it out of science, what are your passions outside of science? Outside of science? Yeah. I enjoy playing tennis. I enjoy playing golf. I enjoy playing guitar. Um, so I used to be kind of a little more musically inclined, but uh, I don't really do that as much. But those, those are three things I really like doing. So something you do in your CH301 class is you always play music at the beginning of the class, which mm -hmm. is really fun. And I was wondering, what's your favorite song right now or your favorite artist, if you have one? Two levels to that. My favorite artist overall, going all the way back when I was in college, is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So. I was heartbroken last year when he passed away. Um, so he's kind of been an enduring thread throughout all my music listening. But as of late, I like a lot of different things. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I play a lot of different variety from pop to alternative to even, although rap's tough to play in class because of the language is a little rough, but um, I do enjoy all of them. Like, Last year it would have been Post Malone. This year, I, uh, because of my son, Sheck West, the Obama song, I've heard that so much that it kind of grew on me. So right now I kind of am listening to that as well. Yeah, Mobamba is the anthem of UT now. <laughs> I know. I, I'm thinking about playing it in class because uh, I sure. noticed they played it at the last football game. They were broadcasting, everybody was singing along with it. Everyone would love it. It was pretty <laughs> awesome, so maybe I'll do that next week. <laughs> so speaking of teaching, what's it like teaching freshmen in such big classes? Uh, I guess the first answer would be it's challenging. Um, it's also exciting because you're in a big lecture hall, you're up on stage, so there's a certain excitement there. Um, but yeah, it's a little difficult. The problem with these large classes is we get a little bit um, too diverse of a set of students from being incredibly smart all the way down to they're really challenged. And so it's hard to balance where you're shooting because there's some that are so bored because it's so easy and others it's just beyond anything they ever did in high school. So that's a little bit of the challenge. It'd be nice if we could somehow partition students better where we could challenge the ones who were ready to have it. But um, overall, it makes for a nicer class because you have a pretty diverse group. So I do enjoy doing all that. And speaking of classes, is there any other class you would like to teach? It can be a class of your making. I, there's, Right now, there's not anything I know that we already have that I want to teach. I, I used to teach occasionally physical chemistry. I would teach a little bit of analytical chemistry. 
Uh, back when I first started out, I taught at uh, Austin Community College. I, was, I taught an organic course there because I've got an organic background as well. Uh, those are all fun, but if I had to make my own course, I would call it the chemistry of interesting things. And I would pick actual things in the real world that are interesting that have chemistry tied to them. And I'd probably try to create at least a semester's worth of interesting where you can do a deeper dive and it all um, I would find that interesting. Hopefully some students would too, but uh, right now that's not on the radar. Can you give us an example of something interesting? Um, let's say, you might not think it might sound boring, but like water purification. Uh, just the whole idea of what you got to filter, what you got to put into it. It's got, a, it's got precipitation reactions in it. It's got oxidation reduction reactions. You put chlorine in it. Just chlorinating a pool has a ton of interesting chemistry from buffering it to all sorts of things. So that would be a real world application there. And then making beer. <laughs> <laughs> making beer, there's a lot of chemistry going on there. So that would be fun as well. That'd be another chapter in the book. Just to pick a couple. Interesting. And speaking of beer, what's your favorite part about Austin? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoy, uh, I. I grew up in Abilene, so I'm a native Texan. Grew up in Abilene, and when I moved here to get my PhD, I really fell in love with Austin. So just all the aspects of it. There was the music scene, uh, just the hill country itself is beautiful, it's great. Um, Austin was just really cool and hip. It still is, it's a little crowded now, which I don't care for, but we still have great restaurants, we got great music, there's all sorts of great things. And then this campus is really fun. So I genuinely like being here. If I could just turn the heat down in the summer, that'd be perfect. But um, I do with, I, I enjoy all those kind of things. So what brought you to UT? When I finished my degree up at Abilene Christian, I had a master's in organic, but I did know I wanted a PhD and I couldn't get that anywhere. I also knew I wanted to go into analytical chemistry. And the premier analytical chemist in the nation at that time probably still is a little bit, is Dr. Alan Bard. He's here, he's still here. He's a premier worldwide renowned electrochemist. So I joined his group and became an electrochemist and never looked back. It was really a great experience. I was here several years getting that PhD. I just didn't go on to become a researcher. I kind of fell in love with teaching while I was doing that. So the idea was to finish that so I could teach. When you were a student, do you have any funny stories when you screwed up in the lab? There weren't any real major screw-ups, I would say. Um, you know, botching an experiment. I, you know, when you do PhD work, it's very, very repetitive. So you're always doing the same experiment over and over trying to collect the data you need. I did a lot of work in the dark room because what I was looking at was light emission off of electrodes. So I would spend my day going into a room, pulling the door shut, and I was in the dark for most of the day. It's kind of depressing in one way. But uh, nothing ever really screwed up, I would say. Uh, I never had any major, th the, the one embarrassing thing I did when I first joined that group is I was pushing equipment through the lab. It's very tall. So as I was pushing it, I was watching down not to hit anything. What I wasn't watching was the up part and the top of it caught a ring that you pull for the shower head when you're on fire. So when it caught it and I went further forward, it turned on the shower head and I got, I got a little shower. <laughs> Luckily, I turned it off immediately because it was a pivot one. It wasn't one that stayed on, but that was a little embarrassing. <laughs> Do you have any embarrassing or funny stories as a teacher? I would say so. What is some of your favorites? Uh, well, sometimes I drop an occasional bad word that I don't mean to. I mean, sometimes I'd say stuff that I know it's it's edgy and all that, but then occasionally if I drop an F-bomb, I'm sorry if that's happened <laughs> only recently. Uh, and then the one thing that was really embarrassing, this is also a little PG-13, but 
I drew a great diagram for intermolecular forces and when I was finished everyone was laughing and I looked at it and it looked like two big penises. <laughs> like that was embarrassing because I did not know I was doing that but all the students were laughing and I turned around and went what's so funny and I looked and I went oh my god. <laughs> so I, I, I was genuinely kind of embarrassed of that because it wasn't my plan. And now when I do intermolecular forces, I consciously try not to do that. But it's, it's sometimes it's, it's hard when you're doing diagrams and you're on a roll, you never know what's going to end up being interpreted like that. So that was embarrassing. So final question is, I know you wrote an article giving advice to students. And yes, I did. I was wondering if you would like to share any of your wisdom right now. Any more wisdom to students? Yeah. Basically the gist of that article, which I told the statesman to call it "Try Not How Not to Be a Dumbass was going to be the name of it. They renamed it. But that theme was in it, if you read it. And I don't mean that in a harsh sense. It's just the way I refer to making bad decisions. And uh, a lot of students make bad decisions in their study habits and stuff like that. And so you need to embrace getting things wrong is the key and and that's my big advice to students is go ahead and and go all in when you miss questions you should definitely embrace that miss and then learn from it which means you immediately see why you missed it and you try to reflect back what led me to making such a a bad mistake on a test especially if there's multiple ones and so the idea is you reflect back and you change your study habits and so you repeat this process and truth be told you repeat this process your entire freaking life is what you do because even as us lecturers like I said I learned some lessons when I was embarrassed in class I misspell words all the time and then I'll get them down I'm never gonna misspell that word but then I'll find another word I can't spell and so it's embarrassing when you're in front of 500 students and do that but it's not devastating. So I do own my mistakes. When students point stuff out in class, I own it. I don't try to deflect it and go, well, I... so you got to own your mistakes. You got to learn from them and you got to move forward. And so that's, that's my big advice. And also don't get worked up on uh, having to know your exact path. A lot of students get a little anxious because they're not sure what they want to do. And so it's, it's mainly important to kind of take the courses, enjoy your college career because it is when you reflect back on it it's some of the best times of your life really if you do it right and so enjoy what you're doing and um, make progress towards that end goal of getting out and graduated and then you can make some new decisions you can decide if you're going to go into the job world or if you're going to go into academia or whatever but all of that is a feel good sort of thing if you do it right all right. I guess that's it. Thank you so much, Dr. McCoy. Sure, no problem. Have a good day. Okay, thanks for coming by. Bye.